Welcome again to the Sabbath School this morning, um, to our Sabbath School studies. And uh, I'm glad to see everybody uh, this Sabbath morning. I believe we, we, we had a good week. And um, I'm just glad that uh, we have had a nice week, for sure. And um, I'm just going to welcome my panelists again and uh, invite our online viewers to be with us, to be able to send in questions, to be able to send in comments, mm -hmm. and we invite you again to participate and study with us even as we get into this lesson this Sabbath. Mm -hmm. My name is Jeremiah Selim, and uh, I am just going to moderate this panel, including you viewers or online. Um, with me... Um, my panelist, uh, Marcy, uh, please say hi to the congregation, please. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. Happy day. Happy, happy Sabbath. Sabbath. I'm once again happy to be here. My names are Marcy Odiwor. Ha let us study together. Karibu sana. Thank you. Uh, next to me, uh, Apio. Uh, thank you. My name is Frank Apio, and uh, I invite you to join us as we study together this Sabbath morning. Absolutely. Thank you. Karibu sana. And finally, I have with me uh, Christ. Uh, I am Christine Onguru. I am happy that you have joined us this morning. Please let's study together. Thank you so much. And so to begin then this lesson, uh, let's have a word of prayer, will we? Yes, yeah, shall we pray? Eternal Father in heaven, mm -hmm. we glorify you for this moment that we have come before your holy presence just to say thank you for preserving us through the week and giving us this opportunity again to come before you. Mm. And to say that the Lord, in your goodness and by your grace, you have then enabled us and carried us through to this moment that we want to study this scripture. Mm. And Lord, we pray that in this reflection, you will be with us. We pray that uh, the Holy Spirit will come in to give us an interpretation, to give us clarity, mm. to give us correction in uh, the grace of God, and even as we get to it, we pray for wisdom from above. In the end, let us say that the Lord has been with us. In the end, let someone hear and come to the uh, truth of your word, and we shall say that the Lord has been good to us mm -hmm. through it all, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you. Thank you. So, um, um, I want to welcome you again. Uh, panelists, and thank you so much for finding time um, to come and uh, participate in this lesson. Last lesson we, was very fundamental mm -hmm. in that it was part two of God's mission. Mm -hmm. And now we went into a deeper, deeper understanding of what God wants us to be in this mission. And fundamentally, we got to focus on the clarion call in Matthew 28, that says that go ye therefore into the world. Because he said that all authority has been given to Christ on earth and in and in heaven. heaven. And so therefore on that account, he gave us that great commission that we still continue to study this morning. So I, I, I don't know whether there were responses, uh, you know, uh, to, to that lesson that you can think of, uh, uh, Christine, starting yeah. with you. Um, th that lesson was very interesting because we, get, we got to see there's a triune God Absolutely. who is willing to carry us through this mission and yes. that we need help. It was very fundamental. Yes. All we need to do is not to fear the barriers, but to go forth in strength. Amen. Mm. Amen. Yes. Barriers and we go forth. Mm. And uh, up here, what, what, did you, what did you pick? Yeah, we know that when God sends us, he just doesn't send us to go and do our own things, mm -hmm. but he sends us with his word that has his power and his authority, mm -hmm. and that is the word that will convert souls to him. And we saw uh, th that eternal gospel, you know, it's a gospel that will save us and even ensure that, you know, God's longing for us to be with him and mm -hmm. to be linked with him is something that that message tries to, you know, the eternal gospel tries to to achieve and absolutely accomplish. absolutely and that and now we we concluded that that met that the bible actually says that it is eternal mm. the bible says it is eternal gospel mm. and the bible goes ahead to say that it is going to be here and it is going to stay and it shall reach every corner mercy mm. every yeah. corner each tank 
each nation. Yes. There was something like that. Yes, indeed. Our gospel, the mission that we have been given, yes. that we are co-partnering, co-partnering with Christ, yes. is to go to the entire nation with the assurance that he is with us, that he is going to be with us till the end of the age. And so let us not be afraid and let us know that the mission field is so great. Mm -hmm. We are to go to the entire world, starting from where we are, starting from where you are, reaching out to all the souls mm -hmm. that no sh soul should perish because Christ's desire is that everyone must be saved. Amen. Thank you so much. And so today's title then says that uh, God's call to, to mission. mission. God's call to mission. And, um, and when you look at it, it's just a continuation mm -hmm. of the last two lessons that we, that we have learned. Mm -hmm. And um, when we now begin to focus on this one, we come to what we alluded to again in the last lesson mm -hmm. about what Christ said before he left that. He said that you shall receive power. Yeah. Uh, we get that in Acts chapter 1 verses 8, mm -hmm. where the Bible says that you shall receive power um, uh, let me read that again. But you shall receive power mm -hmm. when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Mm -hmm. And you shall be witnesses, witnesses to me mm -hmm. in Jerusalem mm -hmm. and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Mm -hmm. And so that is what sets up now the tone for this discussion mm -hmm. today. For one, um, it, it seems appear to say that right before us now, yes. we, we have power. Because this is just right before Jesus left. And he says that when that Holy Spirit comes, you shall receive power. And you shall then become my witnesses. I get a sense that he was saying that I will convert you into missionaries. And I will then uh, give you the opportunity to serve with me in taking the message to where you are right now in Jerusalem, and you will move into all Samaria and Judea to the, to the yeah. do, do you get that sense? Yes. God does not bestow his power where there is no work to be done. Right. And we'll only bestow that power when he actually has a work for us to do. And we've known that God has a work for us from the previous lessons that we've read. Mm -hmm. And so he's asking us, you know, like... Uh, even as we position ourselves to receive this power, mm -hmm. we should know there is a great work that is before us, a work that has to be done. And God is, is now telling us, you know, uh, that this power, the purpose of it is that we shall be witnesses. And the power transforms us. It does not leave us the same. And when we go out there, then we are going, you know, in that strength that God has given us. Yes. And, um, and we see, um, Christine, that... Um, we were in a comfortable place. Mm. You know, you are always in your house. You, you know, you, 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 we, we tend, mm. human, human beings and yeah. humanity in general have this tendency uh, to be very comfortable mm. in some way. You know, I have my work, I, I have my family, and it, it, you just revolve around there. But this is a God who takes you out of your comfort, comfort zone. zone. Comfort zone, yes. right? Like, uh, God already knows the mission has been given us. Now it's time to act. So we are in the action part All of right. this God's mission. Yes. And God understands that you need to be there, but you're still here where you're feeling comfortable because now here I'm among my people. Right. So God provides an opportunity to mm. move you from your comfort zone. Yes. So that you can, you must not stay, but have to move. Yes. God can compel you so uh -huh. that you give your complacency uh -huh. to be an active missionary uh -huh. in the mission fields. Uh -huh. And you know, this lesson uh, writer, Marcy, uh, has talked about uh, the dispersal of people. Mm -hmm. You know, th th that, that disruption that was caused mm -hmm. there at the Tower of Babel mm -hmm. when Nimrod had built that tower mm -hmm. and, and, and he dispersed them and completely created the diversity, right? Yes. yes. And so um, what this writer wants us to understand mm -hmm. is that every time that you find yourself in a very comfortable zone, mm -hmm. then be sure that God is just about to disrupt you. Yeah. The, yeah, be right? ready, be <laughs> ready. He's just about to disrupt you. Don't you get that sense? Yes. Yeah, and also, uh, just before yeah. Matthew come in, you realize that when we live like in big cities as Nairobi, mm -hmm. yeah. where we have like, you know, all these amenities, yeah. yes. life yes. is easy, Very you know, like 
<laughs> yeah, you, you can easily commute from one place to another <laughs> and, and your work is just, you know, like a few minutes away. Yeah. And we try as much as possible even to avoid the difficulties that might come with things like traffic <laughs> jam yes, and yes. all that. <laughs> yes. But then now when we hear that we have to leave that place of comfort and go to, and go to where to life is easy <laughs> or Siberia. then now that's where you know rubber meets the road yeah. and we find it a bit you know hard <laughs> yes you start to question am i really called for this work yes. is there somewhere else that god could actually send me mm. uh-huh. yeah indeed god is sending us and god is using us in a very mighty way and in a very good way because he wants his work to reach out he wants his gospel to be reached to every individual Mm-hmm. And that's why even getting us out of our comfort zone is one of his, mm-hmm. his, his ways mm-hmm. of using us so that we can go out there and even in those hardship areas just to go and minister unto him because he knows that when we are comfortable, seated, when we have everything and as Elder said that uh, he will, he's soon coming to you, he's soon reaching you that you need to be disrupted in your comfort zone so that you can see the need of going out and even the need of praying. Many a times we pray when we are in crisis. Mm-hmm. We look up to God when yes. we are <laughs> having some <laughs> challenges. Yeah, so mm-hmm. God is going to distract us because his, those are his ways of calling us to this mission field. Like these people <laughs> of Babel. The, yeah, they wanted to build this tower just to reach God for their own benefit, right. just to be like God. Yes. You see, God is so powerful, and uh, we cannot reach him. We cannot, uh, our, he says that uh, our ways are not his ways, his ways. neither are our thoughts his thoughts. His thoughts. Yeah, so our, as heaven is higher than the earth, so are his ways to us. So let us be ready to be used and let us know that God is going to use us and is going to make, even if it means taking you to that hospital bed, he will take you. Even if it is taking you to that cell, yes. he will take you so that you can just reach out to his uh, children. Absolutely. And you know, uh, uh, and you, uh, uh, and the book, uh, the book, Patriots and Prophets, mm. uh, the servant to the remnant, um, Ellen White, uh, say that, uh, that this puzzle, the dispersion uh, was a means of actually putting actors in various corners mm. of the world, and that even though they were putting up these towers so that they can somehow block the mission of God, mm. then God used that opportunity then to people everywhere yes. so that now they will be embedded in that mission and they will reach out to and they will reach out to themselves. And uh, so, yes. Uh, I wanted to say that uh, I think the thing they were doing was evil. Because if you read Genesis 11 verse 4, mm. their intention was not pure. Then they said, come, let us build a great city for ourselves with a tower that reaches into the sky. This will make us famous and will keep us from being scattered all over the world. It was not out of pure intention. Mm. And sometimes when you stay in a comfort zone, you say, now I'm okay here in new life. I can do things just within. Yeah. Then you are not being genuine. You are not answering to the call to go out for mission. And God will <laughs> indeed provide, provi- will make you go to prison cells and yes, to yes. hospitals so yes. that you can manifest yes, yes. out of your comfort out of your zone. Comfort. And you, saw, mm. you see Abraham, and we come back again to Abraham. Yeah. We, we saw that last week in the last lesson, yeah. uh, um, that this Abraham was, was comfortable for all we know, yeah. I mean, in all intents and purposes, he, he must have been comfortable. He's, he's a native of Uri, mm. and, and he had cattle. And, and you know, and actually, actually the call started with his father, right? Yeah, yeah his father, Terah. And, and he, he brought the Mze, and the Mze came, and he came to Haran, and he died there. But uh, the lesson we are trying to draw from this, um, uh, Apio, is that he actually called him not ne- he would have used information in Ur. Yes. He would have used information, yes. isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Tell me yes. about it. You, you see, when God does his works, he is uh, benevolent and he knows what he's doing. Right. You know, he tells the, uh, the Israelites that I'll take you to Egypt mm-hmm. and there I will grow, you know, a strong nation. Mm-hmm. Right. You might think that, you know, this, this, this work is going to, you know, it must be done here, mm-hmm. that God could do it here, but God knows where the right opportunity for your growth is. Amen. And he's bringing, you know, like he's taking you to a place where you will not be comfortable. Mm-hmm. He's taking you to a place where you will not be self-sufficient. 
Mm. You can, yeah. you just need to depend on him, you know, like in such situations. Right. And your help is not coming from anywhere else. Yeah. Because if God leaves us in the familiar places that we know, then we might tend to lean on our human understanding. Sure. We might lean on our own ways of doing things. Mm. And God is trying to remind us that I want you to be at a place where you're not self-sufficient. Mm. And that's now where I can teach you my ways. Mm. And that's when I can use you. Mm. Yes. Uh, uh, and, and you see, it was very easy for Jesus to tell them in that memory text that, hey, hey look, you can hang around Jerusalem here, mm. you know, walk around the streets. You are familiar. I mean, when you go to every corner of this city, you find uh, family, you find friends. But he said, no, 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 no. You are going to be my witnesses here. And then all Samaria. Mm. And you know, Samaria was probably uncharted waters for yeah. some of these Galileans yes. uh, who are here this morning. Yeah. Uh, we said, and then you will not end there. You will go to Judea, mm -hmm. the larger Judea, mm -hmm. and then you will go to the ends of the earth. The in other earth. words, I am a God of a mission, mm -hmm. and I am going to give you this mission. Mm -hmm. And it's not just going to be localized around mm -hmm. this geographical, uh, you know, undertaking a uh, mm -hmm. mercy. Mm -hmm. um, that I will, I will send you away. Yes, indeed, God is sending us away. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why when you read Genesis um, 12, 1 to 3, yes. we again encounter Abraham. Yes. Yeah, God is calling Abraham and is, going and is taking him out of, this, of his land yes. to far away land that he's going to, to show him. Yes. When you read uh, 12, verse 2, it says, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. Right. I will bless those who bless you, and yes. I will curse him who curses you. Mm. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Right. So, indeed, on this mission field, we can, others can still be blessed through us. Amen. Yes. If we yes. allow God to use us, mm. if we allow God to use us in this mission field, that yes. others are also going to be blessed through us. And this is God's desire, that every nation, that everyone get this message, that we may get the blessing that comes with knowing Christ. There is a blessing of those who know the word of God. There is a blessing that comes with just walking with God. Because when we walk with God, then we are far much close, we are very close to him, and it means that everything in this world belongs unto us. Mm. Because when we read Matthew, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And, and its righteousness. And then all these things shall be added I unto see. us. Mm. So this is an advantage. That we, as we continue to seek the word of God. Mm. As we continue to spread the word of God. That we are entitled to the blessings. That comes with us spreading. And us partnering with Christ. In taking out his word. And in reaching out to many souls. Which are still longing mm. for his word. Absolutely. Amen. Do we get then uh, Christian get a sense of uh, a change in mind? a change in attitude. Uh, Apio was talking about, uh, you know, you, you are in this place. And, and it's all there. Yeah, you are in Nairobi. Um, you, are, you, are, you are in New York. You are in a, um, a place with infrastructure. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, you are plugged out. Probably that's what could have happened to Abraham. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was wondering, hey, look, I am a native here. Mm -hmm. Now I am going to a land that I will show you. Mm -hmm. And uh, how does that resonate? with you at a personal level? Would it be an immediate uh, response or, or will it be like you feel, you know? Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, this particular lesson is challenging me personally because yes. it has made me look at myself. Are there limitations to where yes. I can go? Mm -hmm. Are there things to which I can say I cannot do without this? Yes. Am I looking at the opportunities I have now as means of spreading the mission, are they the ones hindering me from going beyond and actually utilizing the uh -huh. gifts that God has given me? And, and as I was thinking about Abraham and him being comfortable there, there is a family in this particular church that really challenges me. Mm. The family of teacher Sarah. And mm. the way they just go out yes. and stay there sometimes for mm -hmm. two weeks with children. I don't know. I was looking at them and hearing the things they have done outside there in in a place which is not necessarily a comfort zone to them. Right. And I am challenged. Mm. I still think I need to do a lot. Because <laughs> I don't know <laughs> if I find myself in a place where maybe electricity I can survive. Yes. Maybe water I can mm. survive. But mm. what if there is scarcity of food? Yes. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. Can I survive? What if there is no charge to my phone? Right. Yeah, so it really challenges me. And what if there is no congregation? What if <laughs> yes. there is no charge to yes. go to? And, and so I also what think I the, the other challenge is, you know, when we we come to the city, you find there are some churches that people speak in Swahili. Mm-hmm. There are some that people speak in English. Yes. And uh, for me, uh, a, a couple of years ago, you know, I was invited to a, one such congregation uh-huh. where I was told, you know, you'd have to speak in Swahili. Mm-hmm. Right. But I was like, my Swahili is not fluent. Yeah. And <laughs> if, if, you know, if you're not going to allow me to speak you in to English, give, you to give an excuse. I was like, uh, then I, I don't think I'm comfortable, you know, to come to that mission field. Mm-hmm. But what we are forgetting is that even those people who are in those mission fields, yes. they still need to hear God's word. Amen. And we should just trust that, you know, God will give me utterance. He'll, he will enable my Swahili to be, you know, good enough, enough. for this audience. Mm-hmm. So there are times when we look at ourselves and we, we even look at our deficiencies. And you're like, with my deficiencies, I can only serve in certain places. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But God is telling us that he is the all-sufficiency. Absolutely. And you know, it would be interesting to, uh, to look at the online responses yeah. to the challenges, mm. really, to these things, mm. these comfortable zones. <laughs> I am a politician, and so therefore I'm just comfortable in yeah. politics. Mm. I'm not going to change. You know, um, wh- wh- why, why would you want to, uh, you know, to change what, what, what I have been? Does it even make any sense to you? <laughs> but this particular lesson today mm. then brings us to another very important aspect, mm. which, is, which is God is a God who desires that you and me move this gospel one step at a time. Sure. Because he has given us the time and the opportunity. Mm-hmm. And then within that, he, we are measured. Mm-hmm. We are given an opportunity and measured to the extent that what will it be that we will give as an account to God when finally we are called. And that is what we, what we need to ask ourselves, Mercy. Yes. In the final analysis, there mm. will be you will all we will all be called mm. to account. Yes, yes. You will be called to account mm-hmm. as to the children you were given, mm. as to the neighbors you were given, mm. as to the workers and workmates that you were given. Mm. What should be or what what should be our attitude towards that great purpose that we have? Mm. Yeah, you've just called my attention to the God's mission to us, part one. Yes. Mm. We realize that uh, God called. Uh, Adam, yes. where are you? Yes. And uh, this question is, uh, God was asking, not that he didn't know where Adam was, right. but he wanted Adam to be so much accountable. Mm. So in the long run, as we continue with this mission, we are to be accountable. We are yes. to be accountable for ourselves and even for the many souls that are outside here. Mm. And that's why we are being called to move out that we need to move out of our comfort zones mm. and to continue with spreading this work of God and to continue with this evangelism, that we are partnering with Christ. Let us have the assurance so far, all through, that we are not alone, that Christ is working with us, that he is the one directing us, and that this is his work. And uh, we know that whatever he has started, that he will bring it to a completion for his glory. So we are safe as we continue to go with the God's work. And and, and there is then the great concept of becoming a blessing. Mm. Uh, Because what does it mean to become a blessing? Uh, um, Let's get back again. I I think uh, Apio take us back to Genesis 12, verse 1 and 3. and, 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 And let us try and break it down a little bit to understand that uh, when we are a blessing to others, mm. that he came out of Ur so that he might become a blessing to the place that he's been sent to. Mm. Because then that forms a, a, a basis mm. for our argument then this, uh, on, on this lesson. Y- yes, Apir. Yes, Genesis 12, 1 to 3 says, you know, God said unto him, get you out of your country and from your kindred mm. and from your father's house and to a land that I will show you and I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, mm-hmm. and you shall be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless you, and curse him that curses you, and in you shall all families of the earth be blessed. Mm-hmm. And, and, and we see, you know, like a, a God who is telling Abraham that I am giving you like a call to, you know, like 
go out and share the blessing that I have, you know, like that I've called you, that I've chosen you with others. And he's, he's, he's telling him, you know, like, go from among your kindred, mm. which is still the familiar, you know, like the places where we are familiar with, people that we, we know, like the conveniences of life mm. that we are accustomed to. Mm. But when we stay put in our conveniences, then how are we going to, you know, be a blessing to others? And there is a motif in scripture that, you know, like talks about uh, the issue around, you know, like tabernacles. Mm. Right. And and he says in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, says that uh, Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, they dwelled in tabernacles mm -hmm. and they were moving from place to place. place yes. And somewhere Ellen White tells us that, you know, in every place that Abraham went mm. and he put an altar of stone there, that mm. was a reminder to the people, to the heathen who did not know God, mm. that it was, there is actually a God that, that is out there and a God that wants to reach out to, to his people and to save even those that are outside, uh, you know, like the, the commonwealth of Israel. Mm. And he became a blessing. Mm. So ultimately then, Christine, uh, he became a blessing to the nation where he was sent to. Because it, it, it gives us a sense in, right there in uh, chapter 12 that I, I am sending you so that when you bless others, you are blessed. Mm. And those who bless you, I too will will bless, bless them. them. And before somebody blesses you, you must have done something. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. I, 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 yeah. And that's, that's true. And yeah, also yeah. The, the blessing that yeah. Abraham was going to be to this nation yeah. was essentially leaving God right. with them. Yes. Because now mm -hmm. they did not know that it is God who had called Abraham. So Abraham has left, and they are being blessed because now Abraham is sharing this mission with them. Yes. They are also getting to receive and to know God through Abraham and the yes. way he's behaving. Yes. So yes, you can be a blessing to someone. You are going to a new place where you have not been before. Maybe what those people need. Right. Mm -hmm. You are thinking, the way you look at things, maybe what those people really need to change their minds and to yeah. accept God. And to accept God. Yes. yes. And, and before you bless, mm. you must already, before you bless, you must be blessed. Amen. You cannot give what you don't have. Yes. Would you? Mm -hmm. Under no. very normal human circumstances, mm -hmm. you will not give what you do not don't have. have. Yes. Yes. So it's only fair to say that Abraham was already heavily blessed. Mm. Absolutely, right? Yes. Before he could even be sent on this mission. Mm -hmm. So we must seek the blessings of God. Mm -hmm. it, it tells us uh, as an imperative in itself mm -hmm. that, you know, all these things, give or mm -hmm. take, what really matters at the end of the day is that before you go out, uh, um, appeal, you must have some blessing. You must carry some blessings. Mm -hmm. yes. Else how then would you be able to bless others? True. You cannot yeah. go even with the message if yeah. you've not been sent. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And even the material, the material things, yes. if you don't have for sure, yes. you can't share what you, you don't have. Mm -hmm. And indeed we are blessed because everything in this world is God's Amen. Yes. and us too. And uh, God has put these things in our hands within our reach so that we can also bless others. Mm -hmm. We realized that uh, as we continue to reach out, that we'll reach out with even what we have. Mm -hmm. The word of God, even material things, like when we go to prisons, we go with the stationary, sanitary, we go with tissues, toiletries, we go with soap, and uh, this is blessing them. Mm. Yeah. Mm. We are Absolutely. blessing because so, we so are blessed. Be, so, so for you, there are many ways of blessing yes. people. Yes. Yeah. Because uh, he had, uh, he had livestock mm. and, and one way I am sure when he was passing by, he was mm. like, okay, le le let us, le let me give you some livestock. Mm. Let me give you uh, a ship. Mm. Let me give you a goat. Mm. He would go to an altar and he will, he will, he will, he will offer mm. uh, a sacrifice mm. to, to God. Yeah. Very key. So key in the sense that every time we find ourselves in unfamiliar territory, we must look back to the mission, what, what, what uh, Apio was saying. We must look at what exactly brought me here. Yeah. Yeah, because we have found ourselves in places and we've asked ourselves, but hey, uh, wait a minute, how did I get here? Uh, and what am I doing here? And, in the, and that happened to me one time, you know, you find yourself in the Far East and, um, and you're like, uh, this 
first of all, there's language barrier. Mm. So it begins there. Mm. You cannot even say, and I couldn't even order. I go to a restaurant <laughs> and I look at the menu and I cannot even order anything to begin with. And so you have, you must make a friend to someone who will always look at you like, and you, how did you land here? But if we don't give it an interpretation that there is a purpose mm. to which you have That's been it. said. And I think that Abraham interpreted it uh, very well. Uh, the mission that was before him. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to hear the response of Christine in terms of how he articulated uh, 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 this message. He articulated with, he seems to have been so receptive mm -hmm. uh, for him. While it was a new experience to him, mm -hmm. but he articulated it very well in a way that we see that he felt the presence of God mm -hmm. in his life. Is, didn't he? Yes, he did. I, I wanted to read uh, the book of Hebrews. Yes where we say this is the hall of fame eh? yes and hebrews chapter 11 verse 8 but, yes. let's let's read what is written here about abraham it yes. says mm. it was by faith that abraham obeyed god yeah. obeyed when god called him to leave home and go to another land that god will give him as his inheritance mm. he went without even knowing where he was going verse 9 and even when he reached the land god promised him he lived there by faith Right. For he was like a foreigner living in tents. Yes. And so did Isaac and Jacob, who inherited the same promise. Right. You know, Abraham, he's, a, he's the greatest example. I don't know if one day I will get to that standard. Just going by faith, you have been told, go. And then he leaves and goes. Fine, along the way, we will, we will mm. read in mm. the Bible mm. of the challenges of fear, which are those are human challenges. Right. Fear will come upon him sometimes and he will not know how to go about it. He would forget that God was with him. But Abraham is such a great an example of someone who walks by faith in the word of the Lord and believes that what God has said will be fulfilled through him must be fulfilled either way. Uh, either way. Mm -hmm. And you know that, that the right there, had you gone uh, one verse ahead mm -hmm. in verse 10, it yes. says, for he waited mm -hmm. for the city which, who, uh, who, which has a foundation whose builder and maker mm. is God. Amen. So he, he, he dwelled in these temporary structures. Yes. He transitioned through time. Mm. He, he got a son. And even at that very moment and through all these challenges, he understood that I am leaving for one mission, mm. that there is going to be a time mm. that there will, be, there will be a city. Yes, I live in a tent today. Yes. Mm -hmm. But there will be a city that shall be established mm. that God himself is, is, is the maker. Mm. And even, even us, isn't that uh, our hope uh, up here? Yes. We, we see that uh, same motive of, you know, the us living in tents and in tabernacles. Mm. And Paul mentions it in 2 Corinthians 5. I'll just read. Mm. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5 verses 1 says, For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle mm -hmm. were dissolved, we have a building of God, and house not made with hands, mm. eternal in the heavens. Mm. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed up upon with our house, which mm. is from heaven, mm. if so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. Mm. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, mm. uh, not for that we would not be unclothed, but being clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Mm. So even us, even in our journey in this world, we are always looking for, you know, that time when all things will be will be made new when the you know the uh, the burdens and the labors of mission mm -hmm. are actually crowned in 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 people being saved and being glorified mm -hmm. and so it's still us to look up you know to abraham and and take on you know the work that god has given us and to just remember that we are temporary citizens here and we are working for the salvation of souls and we are co-working with god to bring uh, eventually to that you know like end that god uh, desires that you know he says God has prepared something better for us. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And, and you know, Paul still adds again in 2 Corinthians, uh, that episode in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses, um, verses 7 and 8, mm -hmm. that we have this treasure, mm -hmm. albeit in earthen vessels, mm -hmm. that the excellence and the power of God may, that the excellence and the power of God uh, may be of God, actually. And then he said that we are hard-pressed on mm -hmm. every side yet not crushed. Mm -hmm. We are perplexed, perplexed, but not in despair. Mm. Persecuted, 
but not forsaken. Mm. Struck down, but, but not, not destroyed. destroyed. Amen. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. Uh, and so, to concretize this then, um, Mercy, mm. this mission is not even easy. It doesn't <laughs> look like it, does it? <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> look like it to me. Yeah, it doesn't look easy, just as you are uh, assuring or confirming, mm. but it is easy. Yes. Because of Christ's presence, mm. Amen. because of the presence of God with us. Amen. We realize that it is a triune mission. God. Yes. And God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are all in it. And it is their mission because they are the one who originated it in the Garden of Eden by looking for man. And so, despite the challenge of it having so many challenges, we know that it is never easy with man. But with God, everything is possible. So, let us have this assurance all along. Let us carry it with us that when we take everything, when we take all our burdens to Christ, that all is going to be possible and that all is easy because Christ is with us in this mission. It is his mission. We are just co-partnering with him and we are just helping him because we are in this world and he said that we need to be with him in his work as we continue to gear towards heavenly kingdom. Absolutely. That is a good way then to uh, make a few observations about the life of Abraham. Because uh, uh, up here, do we see grace somewhere here? Do you see God's grace? Uh, uh, because every time we, we, we focus on this mission, then we are focusing on pointing out where the grace of God that surpasses the understanding of men mm -hmm. have been at work. So that we now read this mission, uh, you know, together with the provisions of grace in Christ Jesus. Yes, when you look at uh, Abraham leaving like his homeland and he's going down to Egypt, mm -hmm. we see he's on a mission, you know, he's going with God. And God is leading him. He does not know where he's going, but God is leading. But even in that process of, you know, trusting God, that God is going to lead him, he comes across, you know, challenges, the challenges that will come in the mission field. Mm -hmm. and, and we see he goes into Egypt, and uh, Sarah is very beautiful. Mm -hmm. And so he, fa he faces a challenge where he's, like, if I tell these people that you are my wife, they will <laughs> kill me, and then they will have you, you know, right. uh, as, as a wife. Right. And so they come up with a scheme to, you know, like, lie to the, to the king of Egypt. Mm -hmm. and, and we see, you know, like, sometimes we, even though we are trusting God in this work, mm -hmm. we, we come to points where we feel that, you know, if we do not do something to, yeah. to safeguard ourselves, <laughs> to <help> God. <laughs> yeah, if we do not help God in some way, then <laughs> challenges might come. Mm -hmm. And we see, at, uh, you know, Abraham doing that. And even though he's a father of faith, mm -hmm. we see him, like, at one moment, like, doubting God. But God does not abandon him and say that, you know what, mm -hmm. I tried to, to ask you to trust in me when I started this journey with you. Mm -hmm. But God gives him another chance. And we see, even though he's, he's lying, even though he's made, you know, like, uh, he's, he's made God's name to be, you know, uh, the reputation of God to be at stake, mm. God still uh, restores him. And God restores Sarah back to him uh, by mm. speaking to, to the king of, king of Egypt. And we see that uh, in going into these missions, there will be challenges. Mm. And there will be times when we fall short. But God's grace is still sufficient in that even in, with our deficiencies, God is still able to use us. And God is still able to, you know, keep true to the, to the words that he spoke. Absolutely. And somewhere in the book of Isaiah, he says Absolutely. that, you know, my word shall not return unto me right. void, but it shall accomplish that which I have purposed in my, in my yeah. heart. Let me, let me just add uh, something to what Apio has said. I think Apio has used very kind words. Right. God really handled the, <laughs> the Pharaoh in Egypt. He had to return Sarah back. Yeah. But then what, what lesson I pick is that uh, you, can, you can be a liar, you can go into errors, you can fall into sin, mm -hmm. but God's grace assures you of forgiveness if you confess, mm -hmm. and then you will still be given a chance to participate in the mission. True. Yes, mm -hmm. thank you. And um, do, we, do we stand in danger? Do we stand in danger of sometimes uh, finding ourselves in situations like that of Abraham, mm -hmm. where we, we, we feel that um, God probably has abandoned us, mm -hmm. 
that we are not so sure mm -hmm. of the presence of God, um, uh, Christine. Mm -hmm. uh, that God is not, uh, uh, what is the evidence? You know, sometimes we forget as human beings to walk by faith. Mm -hmm. And so we want visible things, tangible things. If, if God has said that today I want you to go to Turkana and everything has been planned. So I expect to just leave this place and get to Turkana without experiencing any challenges. Mm -hmm. However, I would get to Kitale yes. and things, probably the cars, the, the engine dies or something has been delayed or just things are not working the way I expect them to work. Then I will start doubting. Is this how God really wanted it to be? Mm -hmm. I would be thinking, instead of mm -hmm. thinking of how can I get to Turkana, I'll be thinking of how can I go back to Nairobi? You know, because I have gotten to a point that I am expecting God to fulfill this mission. And if it is not working, then there is a challenge. Probably the challenge is that God has forgotten me or that God did not intend it to be like this. So it's just lack of faith, I think, basically. And, uh, yeah. Uh, pro probably, you know, you get to see, you talk about Turkana. <laughs> and then, you know, this Turkana place, one day I go there, we reach somewhere, then I remember, did they say they are scorpions? <laughs> I scorpions i started thinking a scorpion bite mm -hmm. a scorpion sting mm -hmm. and then they said again the the, the place had bandits mm -hmm. and i imagine and you know everybody else is excited mm -hmm. that okay we will sing the whole night we'll make bonfires but at the back of my mind i will be like hmm you'll be doing bonfires and then a scorpion creeps mm -hmm. in and Tang, you know, you get that stick. Uh, and so those are some of the of the doubts that the saints of the Lord experience in our human circumstances. Mm. That sometimes we reach a point where we say, "Huh, really? Uh, will it work, or will it not work? Uh, will God?" And, and it happened to Elijah. You remember Elijah? Uh, what, what happened? Uh, you you have been in a brook. You have been fed by ravens. Mm. You have been provided of the Lord. Mm. And yet you are still running away mm. until you fall dead by a juniper tree. Mm. Until the angel of the Lord comes and, and, and what, what, what are you, what are you doing, doing here? here? You, you know, God must, res, you know, God must remind some of the workers that what exactly are you doing here? We must reach that point up here. Don't, yes. Isn't it? Yes. Mm. Yeah. Well, well, you know, God tells us that you started well mm. uh, in the work, yes. mm. but then you have slumbered somewhere. <laughs> and so God is trying to shake us. And, and you know, sometimes when we need the signs, when we need God to, to, to actually show his presence, he will in certain circumstances. Mm. We saw him leading the Israelites, you know, by a pillar of cloud and, you know, yes, and, yes. and by a pillar of fire by, by night. By night yes. and, and we also see him, you know, when Thomas doubts and Thomas says that, you know, I will only believe that it is Christ if you show me the, 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 the wounds. But then it also comes to a point whereby, you know, God now has to do something else. Mm. He has to really shake us out of, you know, like uh, our roots. And mm. we see, you know, with the persecution of, of the early church now mm. coming in, and, and they have to be scattered now and they have to go out to the nations mm. right. through that persecution. Mm. Yeah, even as we continue with the, with the challenges that we face on this mission field, we have the assurance that Christ is with us. Amen. Challenges are to make us grow. There was a lesson that uh, came that growing in Christ. Yes. Yeah, we grow in Christ through these challenges. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are not to make us feel that Christ has forsaken us mm -hmm. or that Christ has left us. Let us know that as they come, we are going to be strong, powerful in prayer. Mm -hmm. And in this, at, as, <laughs> as we continue to doubt or to have more faith, mm -hmm. we are knowing that Christ is with us because he, this is his mission. This is what is work. So yes. he's not forsaking us. He's with us in he's it. With us. And, and it yes. is an assurance. And yeah. for our online viewers, if they are joining us right now, it's just to uh, uh, remind you again that this mission that we are looking at, we are looking at God's call to mission, really, and what it means in our lives. And this mission that he gave us from the time that he brought Abraham out of Ur until right now until he commissioned the disciples telling them go ye into the world and that is what we are actually uh, learning and so i meant to ask uh, christine mm -hmm. to just take us through some of the things that abraham may the attributes what, what, what are these key attributes that we can pick 
out of Abra now that we are sure that his mission was fairly successful, mm. yes. isn't it? Yes. Yeah. What are these, these the attributes? The greatest attribute you can pick from Abraham is the obedience in faith. Amen. That is the greatest. It summarizes everything for me yeah, in that it Abraham. Is obedience. Yes. And for you, Apio, what, 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 what is the attribute? The winning attribute? Abraham, you know, like he continued trusting in God mm. even yeah. though he faced challenges. Yes. And so even as, you know, when we have that resilience yes. as, as, as missionaries mm. and co-workers with God, Trusting that, you know, even amidst challenges, mm-hmm. God is still going to... And sometimes the challenges might be things we bring upon ourselves by True. our self-doubt mm-hmm. and, and questioning God. But we need to realize that God is still going to, you know, like uh, if we keep at it mm-hmm. and we do not give up our, our confidence, mm-hmm. then he's faithful and just to do to us mm-hmm. uh, beyond what we can imagine. Amen. Yes. Uh, and so for Abraham, it ended well. Mm-hmm. It is a story that... Uh, that uh, that uh, Christian has uh, told us that uh, it made it to the role, the whole of faith. Mm. Yeah, yeah, when ultimately the writer of Hebrew uh, broke it down and and and, and wrote this uh, great thesis mm. of uh, o- o- that says by faith, mm-hmm. and so it was all by faith, mm. by faith. So it was all about faith mm. yes. after all, mm. and, and 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 that faith carried them. And I am hoping that towards the close of the ages, mm-hmm. what will carry the saints is that faith. Sure. I, isn't it, Marcy? Isn't, yes. it, is, isn't it amazing mm-hmm. that we, we every day we move in as people of faith? Huh? And we are praying every day, praying for someone's faith to be, to be revived mm-hmm. and praying for ourselves alone mm-hmm. that we may have enough faith and sufficient faith mm-hmm. that it will carry us through, mm-hmm. through this age, isn't it? Yes, for sure. We are now. Mm. Uh, 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 how about we? How about the the early church? W- what is it? Because Christ left, and when Christ left, um, he gave them only one promise: that um, guys, I am going to send a a, help. a helper. Mm. And when he comes, mm. you shall be my witnesses. Mm-hmm. My witnesses. Let's look at the early church. Mm. What what can you say about the early church? Mm. So we see the early church. You know, they had this interaction with Christ mm. right and Christ was telling them that you know the three years of service that I've been with you mm-hmm. is enough for you to go out and tell people of the good news yeah. and the message they were going with was that Christ is res- resurrected and Christ will come again and and we see you know like Christ tells them that you will receive power and mm. the work shall begin in Jerusalem mm. and into all Judea then they will go out into Samaria but for a time we see that you know, the numbers were, people were being added into the church at Jerusalem, mm-hmm. but they were not uh, going out. They were not scattering. And so God, you know, like looks for a way to ensure that the news is not just confined to Jerusalem, but it actually goes beyond the walls of Jerusalem. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But, but, but you see, Christine, mm-hmm. <laughs> the, the thing about the early, <laughs> it was this thing about exclusivity of mm-hmm. Christ. Uh, you know, the Jewish in Jerusalem felt that this is our own. We own it. I mean, we are exclusive. We are the Jewish. Come on. Yes. Yeah. And so if we are the Jewish, this mm. thing will not live here. Actually, actually, you know, um, when they went out right. during persecutions, they still just yeah. went to speak to the Jews alone. Yes, yes. So if we read the book of Acts chapter 11, verse 19, this is what it says. Yes, and yes. it is very interesting. Right. Meanwhile, yes. uh, the believers who had been scattered during the persecution of Stephen's death, traveled yes. as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch of, us, of Syria. They preached but, the word of God, but only to, only to Jews. Like their mindset had not really set in that the inclusivity meant to the Gentiles. And I mean, those people you thought do not deserve. So their mentality was still clogged. And, and God had to really look for a way to push them out of their comfort zones, which right. was ideally in their minds, not now physically, right. because they had dispersed. Yeah. So that they would... For, uh, the example of Peter comes out so clear that Peter was restricting himself to only speak to the Jews until when the vision of the Lord came yes. to him yes. when he was seated there and he saw unclean food right. in, the, in the Jewish um, menu. Now. menu <laughs> yes, unclean food. And he was told, arise and eat. Yes. And say, I don't eat these things. Yeah. 
But then the word of the Lord was clear. How can you say something that God has qualified yes. is unclean? Yes. And then in, a, in essence, he came to understand that this mission that now they have been spread to the world mm. should not be only to the Jews in those areas, mm. but even to those other people. Mm. Who are Did you see, Jews. Mercy, yes. they should have picked it. They should have picked it. <laughs> For me, I imagine that they should have picked it when he said that you will be my witnesses yes. in Jerusalem. Mm. But yeah. not just Jerusalem, Samaria. Yes. And I am sure they told to them, is the master really uh, straight with this thing? Mm. That we will go into Samaria and then to the end of the, the, end the, of, to the, end of mm. the earth. Mm. So they were ill-prepared. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so ill-prepared to the point that they move from Jerusalem and they travel, but when they go, they don't come. They make sure that they ask, which Jew? And, and it happens to us. You know, when we go to some places uh, in Tanzania, is there an the, Adventist? Yeah, yeah, is there an Adventist, Adventist somewhere who I can... Uh, uh. So the, 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 this thing that we have a feeling that it is exclusively ours, mm -hmm. you know, it is ours. It, it, it doesn't belong to anybody. Do you, do, do you, do you, do you see that, Marcy? Do you see yes. that they interpreted that? Yes, it the is. The early church. The early church. Mm. Yeah. yeah, even during the, the persecution that happened was for them to go beyond their comfort zone. Mm. Right. So that they could be able to reach out. Mm. Right. We have been told to reach out as a means of doing this mission. Mm. And so God will, will work it out. Mm. He yes. will use every means possible, mm. even to scatter us, even to make us to be out there, because this message is not ours alone, mm. like these Jewish people. Mm. They thought that it was only them, and they wanted just to be together. Mm. And you see, Christ is that all, that yeah. everyone should have mm. this, this, this word of God. And you and see, so, the strange thing, yes. the strange thing is that they were with Jesus, and yeah. Jesus had said clearly that I came mm. to seek and, and to save, save that, which that which is lost. lost. Mm. Uh, I don't know how they missed it. Mm. That uh, and interpreted the that these Gentiles, they are not so deserving. <laughs> yeah, they are not lost. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you, you, you see, when you look at the work that has been done by Gentiles, such as, you know, Dr. Luke, for example, right. and you start to see how narrow their thinking was in thinking that it was, the message was only meant for the Jews. Mm -hmm. And it's been a problem you know, like with, uh, with all like, Christianity. There is everyone who who thinks that it's only my God that is, you know, like, uh, only my God needs to be worshipped. Mm. And there are other people that do not worship my God. They are either doomed. And uh, John and, and uh, James, the sons of Zebedee, you know, they, they at one point even told the Christ that, just send fire to burn, you know, these some, 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 mm. Samarians and mm. all that. Mm. And, and they, we are not like any different from them mm. in that right. we've thought that certain messages are exclusively for certain people instead of, uh, spreading out that message, the goodness of God to every man, mm -hmm. to every, you know, it's actually uh, a, a thing that the word of God, when Mark talks about it, he says that, you know, the spreading of the word of, of God is like the scattering of seeds. Mm -hmm. And it goes out. The, the seed does not choose where it's going to fall. Mm -hmm. And God's blessing do not choose which people. God is not a respecter of persons. True. And ultimately, they they got an, an interpretation. Mm. Uh, they they probably got on the right footing yes. at some point. Mm. On the road to Damascus, uh, Paul, um, uh, is he Paul? He, he's Saul of Tarsus. Yes, he's Saul, he's Saul of point. Tarsus. Mm. And so uh, the experience on the road to Damascus mm. is a near-death experience, mm. first of all, mm. that, that it, it took God uh, taking... Uh, soul of Tarsus through a near-death experience in order to convert him and to convince him ultimately mm -hmm. that everybody is deserving of of this of this gospel mm -hmm. and and that and that to me and the way I look at it um, uh, is that he needed just to begin where he was mm -hmm. you know we all need to begin where we are we we all need to begin as we a progressive step mm -hmm. in, 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 in this mission mm -hmm. because it's not going to be uh, sweet by and by. Mm. It cannot be sweet by and by. Mm. It is only going to be progressive. Mm. It is going to be it is going to be something that all of us must take one step 
at, at a time, time mm. and being guided by the Holy Spirit mm. every day mm. to consider and to look at the opportunities around us and to listen to the calling of the Holy Spirit mm. that we may then move towards accomplishing this mission, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, essentially then, it means that ours is to share the truth yes. beyond borders, right. not imposing them to like follow us. Absolutely. Just share the truth as it is. Uh, last week we said it is as it is in the book of Revelation 14, verse 6 and 7. Share it like that and then allow the imbuing of the Holy Spirit to do the conversion bit. To the one. But be very courageous. Go beyond your people who speak your language. Go to places you have never been before, people you have never thought that deserve to know about God, those are the ones you need to consider as you go out. Yes, yes, it is uh, starting from where we are. Mm. And uh, we've realized that uh, when you read Acts mm. one eight, we were told that you shall receive power mm. when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea Samaria and to the end of the earth. Mm. So this one still affirms to us where our mission field is. We realize that it is into this earth and uh, earth is all places everywhere where we are at our workplaces, at our places, at our places of residence, in our homes, in our houses. We have to start from where we are mm. because this message is to reach out as fast as possible. We realize that as we continue to share this word of God, you share it with the, your friend, then the friend also goes to another place. And like this, it will go far much as Christ expects of us. Absolutely. And you know, I, I, I like that bit. Because where it places us today, and it places every saint of God in the last days, is that there is a place that you fit. Yeah. And so when uh, the early church uh, found themselves in the circumstances that they found themselves in, mm -hmm. they realized that, oh, we cannot do this thing for, for long. It mm -hmm. cannot be exclusively Jewish. Mm -hmm. It has to be, it has to go all the way mm -hmm. to the ends of the yes. earth. And that is why now we see now people like, like Barnabas coming. Yes. People, we, we see Paul taking up mm -hmm. uh, to become uh, the minister to the, to, Gentiles. The, uh, to the Gentiles. And so we are not limited so to speak, um, uh, Christine, mm. are we limited? We are not. There is no limitation. There is no boundary to where you need to go to. You can go anywhere. Right. And also, you're not limit limited in your performance because God then will provide what is relevant for you. You know, we have gifts and uh, we also have uh, abilities and capabilities. Mm. So God will magnify those to ensure that where there is a shortfall, then it is filled by his grace and his provision. Very well. Mm. Yeah, and even Christ himself says, you know, in the book of John 12, verse 8, he, he tells uh, his, uh, the Israelites who are there that, you know, the poor you have with you always. Mm -hmm. There is always somewhere we can start. Yeah. You know, we don't need to say that there is no opportunity for us, uh, even as we, as we go out. Mm. It could be, you could be called to a foreign uh, field to, to work there, but... Sometimes it's not the foreign field that is meant for you. Mm. It could be God is calling you to, you know, work from home. Start here. Start, you know, with the family. Mm. Start with the people that are close to you. And, and uh, I just want to read for us a quote from uh, Ellen White where she says, you know, as we pass through life, there come to us many opportunities for service. Mm. All around us, there are open doors for ministry. Mm. By the right use of the talent of speech, we may do much for the master. Mm -hmm. Words are a power for good when they are weighed with the tenderness and sympathy of Christ. Money, influence, tact, time, and strength, all these are gifts entrusted to us mm -hmm. to make us more helpful to those around us and more of an honor to our creator. Many feel that it would be a privilege to visit the scenes of Christ's life on earth, mm -hmm. to walk where he trod, to look upon the lake where he loved to teach mm. and the valleys and the hills where his eyes soft and rested. Mm. But we need not go to uh, uh, Palestine in order to walk in the steps of Jesus. Mm. We shall find his footprints beside the sick bed, in the hovels of poverty, mm. in the crowded alleys of the great city, mm. and in every place where there are human hearts in need of consolation. Amen. Yes. And, uh, and that's a good point uh, to try and conclude this lesson. Because you realize that just before Christ ascends to heaven, 
he brings them and focuses them on his on this mission mercy mm, yes. he he does not he does not even um, uh, you know he makes it very clear to them mm. that you have a mission with you mm. i have given you the keys uh, mm. that opens the gates mm. Yes. Um, to eternal life, mm -hmm. so that you become co-workers yes. with me, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yes, indeed, Christ mm -hmm. opened it all for us, and uh, that's why He even gave us the authority that we need to go out. All the authority has been given unto us, and all the all that we need, His presence is with us. Remember, He has said that He will be with us till the end of the age, and so He is with us on this mission. We have to go. We have no excuse. We are on a we, mission. We have to go. Mm. Absolutely. So I just want to then invite us all that even as we focus more on this lesson mm. and to our audience as, we, as, as, as you listen to us and you contribute to us and give us your input, we remain a mission-oriented church. Amen. And, and it's incumbent then upon us that God that we serve is God of mission. Mm. And he, it is so so in our <clears throat> in our mission uh, statement so when we say today that i will go we are working in in that thematic the broader thematic yes. area of serving a god mm -hmm. of of of, of mission so i want to thank you so much i want to thank our viewers as well thank my panelists uh, as we conclude this lesson and say that the lord will bless us mm -hmm. as we seek again to meet in the next lesson and we participate together and we contribute together, and we search the scriptures together. I will ask um, Apio to uh, give us a closing prayer. Let's humble ourselves as we pray. Our Father Divine, we come before you this morning. We thank you for having taught us your ways and for reminding us, Lord, that uh, in this work there will be uh, challenges and there will be tribulations, but you promise that you will be with us, Lord. Mm -hmm. May you make us trust you more, Lord, even with the places that you call us to. And we just want to pray that if there have been instances where we've been complacent and mm -hmm. we've been uh, comfortable in, in, our, in our fields of mission, Lord, may you uh, shake us again. May you remind us again, Lord, to sail uh, the, the waters and to go to where the souls are dying. And Lord, every day as the uh, Macedonian call goes out, Lord, that we will always be ready to say, here I am, Lord, uh, oh Lord, send me. Be with us for the rest of this day and even for the subsequent services. Uh, may your will be done in our lives, even as our worship, uh, Lord, is accepted before your throne. For this, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen.